Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Living on the Edge. Uh, it is Tuesday morning. Sorry about that. I usually record these on Monday. I don't know. I had a lot of stuff going on yesterday besides the usual catching up with work and trying to get all my stuff done and what have you. I had that on top of some things going around the house here. So just, uh, yeah, just a little bit later than usual on this, but I always like to kind of do these and record them and, and, and get them out and give you guys some thoughts and some insights from over the weekend and what have you. So, okay, we'll go back uh, Friday. I uh, ended up going to normal community high school again, as I said, it's the truth. I've been three out of the first four weekends I've been in normal <laughs> one way or another. Um, week one, obviously, that Saturday night, I saw a great game in uh, East St. Louis and Mount Carmel. Uh, then I went back the following week on Saturday during the day for what turned out to be a very good game. We got a chance to color on the WJOL with Coach Joe, so we did that. Uh, that was uh, O'Fallon taking on Lincoln Way Central, and then obviously back Friday for what turned out to be a great game and kind of everything I thought it was going to be a uh, normal community. Uh, the Ironman beat uh, Peoria uh, 63-42. And, and it was kind of a strange game. We'll get into it. Um, first of all, shout out to Normal Community AD Nick Kierfot, Kier I believe. K-E-A-R-F-O-T-T, uh, Kierfot. Uh, thanks to Nick. Um, amazing hospitality in Normal Community. Everybody's great. Um, great to see some old, old faces as well. Um, we just had a blast. Uh, yes, I did have a pork chop thanks to uh, Nick Kierfot and uh, amazing, amazing pork chop sandwich in normal community. That's all I, I can tell you. That is my ringing endorsement. It is outstanding. One of the best I've had. Yeah, it, it definitely is right up there. Uh, loved it. So by all means, if, if you go to a game in normal community, you have to get the pork chop sandwich. And again, it's part of this IHSA contest. They're in the savory 16 or whatever it is, and I'd be shocked if they don't win it because it's it's that good. I haven't had the other 15, obviously, but I've had a lot of good pork chop sandwiches over the years at high school games, and this one by far was surpassed them all. So again, that was great, did that. But the game itself was, you know, again, it's 105 points combined. So your first thought is, yeah, well, defense was a second thought. It really didn't play out that way. I didn't, I didn't come away with that feeling. I thought normal community in both Peoria played pretty good defense at times, and there were there were some big hits and some big stops. And um, it, it just, to me, was more two highly effective, very strong offenses that were just clicking and, and just – really executing and you kind of know what you're going to get out of Peoria and, and Tim Thornton's team. You're going to get, you know, a, a real good balance and mix on offense. And, and the Lions definitely had that a very good running game. Um, but they also, and, and this is what is impressive. And I think it got kind of lost in the mix a little bit. Uh, Peoria started a backup quarterback. And uh, starting quarterback, uh, Tino Gish, uh, was in street clothes on the sideline. So I don't know what was going on with that, honestly. I guess it's really not my business. But, uh, yeah, he did not play. And, and for a backup to come in in that situation in such a big game and be able to put up 42 points and a loss, well, you couldn't ask him. I thought he had a really, really strong game. And, uh, again, just I'll have more details about player names and what I thought of the performance in the Scotter report later in the week. But um, yeah, I, I, I didn't you know, come away with the feeling that you know, boy, both these defenses just completely sucked and they didn't do anything. I'm far from it. I, I thought both teams played really well. They're both very good. I think normal community is a team that the teams in seven, a in Chicago land better keep an eye on a little bit because I have a feeling this is a normal team that could, maybe make a bit of a run here. And, and like I said, the normal people know it as well as anyone. They said, look, we know we're going to run into Chicagoland. It's just a matter of time. So they're, they'll be ready and they'll be gearing up for some of the better seven, eight teams that they're going to run into and uh, come playoff time. But normal's a very good team. Uh, 
Kyle Beatty, the unit quarterback, was just he was just not. He had a great game. I mean, showed great touch, really good arm, good deep ball. Very, very impressive at from an accuracy standpoint. I know he had a combined seven touchdowns in the win and very much a dual threat, can run, can throw, uh, flush out of the pocket. He throws the ball on the run. Just really, really strong performance. And Beatty's only a junior, so uh, definitely a name to watch. Mark Hunt, Marquand Gary's one of the top receivers, had three touchdown catches. Um, and, and what impressed me is that this is a normal community team that was able to answer punch the punch blow for blow against Peoria, which most teams don't. You know, most teams end up falling behind. You know what Peoria is going to do. They're, they're going to obviously they want to want to score quickly, and once they go to kick off, they're going to onside kick every time, which they did against Normal. Normal handled it and, and was well coached and well prepared. So, again, just had a, a really good game. I love the Big 12 for a couple of reasons. Number one, no sophomore games on Friday nights. Yeah. I know. Don't get me started. I'll start venting about playing sophomore on Friday night. Whatever. Sophomore, save your save your anger. It's fine. I won't get into it. But the point of that is, it's a seven o'clock kickoff in the Big Twelve. They're kicking off at seven o'clock. It's beautiful. So uh, it'll go down to normal again. A little over an hour from my house. Over a game. Get back in the car. Drive back. I was back before some of the games. Some of the games up here were still going on, so it's it's it, it was just a, just a really good trip on Friday. So I really enjoyed that game. Glad to see it too. Got a good eye of of Peoria and believing the Lions are going to be just as dangerous in five A as they've ever been. Um, also got a good look at Normal Community, which again, this is one of the better Normal Community teams I've seen in some time. So it's going to be fun to see these plays. Wouldn't be shocked to see them make a pretty good run in seven A. Um, then Saturday, Saturday, I ended up going to Dushan Field uh, on the shores of uh, Lake Ellen and uh, saw the opposite, saw a 13 to 10 game. So Friday, I saw 105 points combined. Saturday, I saw 23 points combined. Uh, Lombard West, somehow, some way, <laughs> hangs on and beats Lions 13 to 10. And it was a wild game. Um, First of all, you know, you see the reports, and, oh, you know, Glenmark West has a lot of injuries. Look, they have a lot of injuries. It, it's no joke. I mean, you know, it. I joked with Chad Hetlett that next game they come out of the locker room and they have a guy with a, with a flute, a guy with a drum, and another guy walking on crutches because they look like, some out of the Civil War coming out of the locker room with all these guys on on wheelie, you know, the little carts that you push along and kids in walking boots and cast and it's it's crazy. I mean, they've had injuries and they have been serious injuries as well. They're not more than just nicks and games, big time injuries, and they suffered more injuries during this win to, to the Lions. And, Somehow they found a way offensively. They're just not able to generate a ton of points and a ton of yards. But, they, again, they just, they just found a way. Second half, they hung around. Their defense kept a minute the whole first half. And second half, they got a, a couple of answers on offense and put up a touchdown and played great defense. And, uh, again, blocked, uh, blocked a field goal attempt by Lions at the end of the game that would have won it. Or actually would have tied it, would have tied it at 13, and um, then Cesario blocked the second one. So um, they hold on for the win. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to Glenbark West the rest of the year, honestly. I don't know if they're going to find a way. They're at 2-2 two and two now. If they're going to find a way to scratch out five wins, I think it's possible. Um, but, again, with just all these injuries, I don't know what the situation is, whether – a kid like Julius Ellens will make it back in time for the year. It, it looked like a semi-serious injury from what I hear. So, again, I, it all going to depend on that roster and, and, the, and the health report. And if the hitters can get some of these regular starters back and healthy and playing, you know, you don't know what you'll run into in the playoffs with them. But, again, nothing but props to the Hilltoppers. Um it's a gutsy performance. It's, I thought, a, a pretty good Lions team. But, again, 
you know, Lions, I'll be honest, I think offensively they disappointed me on Saturday. I, I see I see some real potential of this team being good. And, th- and this was a team that I ranked, and I ranked them for a reason in the preseason and, and stuck with them because there's talent on this team. I mean, I mean, uh, um, you know, Ryan Jackson's a very accomplished quarterback. I thought he played pretty well in this game. Um, you look at you know the remaining skills and the line plays gigantic. Ryan is absolutely huge up front. Eddie Sturrock, everybody knows. Um, you, you go up and down the roster. Uh, Sam, the, the junior wide receiver, is probably one of the better junior wide receivers I've seen. I mean, targeting a bunch, made some big catches, and, and just a really good athlete. But I don't know. It just seemed like the Lions' offense kind of was like stuck in first gear, or stuck in gear, and just did not find a way to a big play or two. And it, it just be more satisfied with kind of going five yards out, five year out, and five here, and three there. And just, I don't know, can never, can never get that big play, that big momentum play that uh, I, I think it could have changed things for them. And, you know, I just thought the way that defensively they played, Lions played a really good game defensively, and it's obviously depleted for them by the West offense. But still, defense kept being the game to win it, and uh, gave the ball and three good field position, gave you multiple possessions. And in my opinion, in my opinion, in my eyes, it's up to the offense to get it done for Lions. So, um, kind of a disappointing loss, I think, if you're a Lions fan, because it's one that you definitely could have had. Um, so, we'll see how things shake out. I still think Lions are going to be a playoff. I just don't know how far the team's going to go. I really don't. Um, hopefully they can get some things figured out. Uh, we'll have to through the season, so uh, I, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, not going to lie, a little bit disappointed. I thought, thought I'd see a bit more from the Lions than what we got on Saturday. But, hey, it happened. So, it's a long year. A lot can change. Believe me, I know that for uh, quite some time. So. And again, I just love covering games at Lumberg West. I'm not going to lie. It, it's an amazing setting. It just looks great. It feels great. Um, it's a throwback. If you've not, my God, if you've never been to Lumberg West for a game, you have to go. I mean, even if you can't stand Lumberg West, just go, go sit on the visitor side or go stand in the back of the end zone. It's about as good of a setting for high school football as you'll find really anywhere. It's it, it's it's it. Uh, great hospitality as well. Edna, my friend Edna, who manages the sidelines for uh, Lombard West. She's a legend. Just great to, get to see her again and see a lot of the other people with Lombard West. They've always treated me tremendously. So, uh, again, just thank you for that. So that, that was, that was a, those were the games I covered. Um, there were some other things that have gone on. Um, from a ranking standpoint, I mean, Jesus, where do you want me to start? It, it has not been a good ranking year. It, it's been rough. I don't know if you want to call it Perry. Um, I got asked this question over the weekend. I thought it was a good question. Why are we seeing, why are we seeing so much kind of back and forth and teams moving in and moving out of the polls? Well, is it parity? Yeah, I guess in some regards it is. Um, I think it's a parity outside of the power program. The power programs are getting stronger. As I said, basically the rich are getting richer these days. Uh, we look at Mount Carmel, look at Loyola, look at Lincoln, like look at um, the main south of the world. I mean, they're still on top. They're, they're still some of the top programs in the state. There really has been much of a drop off at a very high level. Um, so, again, the rich kind of seem to get richer and then everyone else kind of falls in line. Um, there's a few exceptions. I think York is one of those for sure that an up and coming program that continues to build up. And, and I think York is as good as a lot of people there. Um, I will get to see the Dukes soon. I promise. I have one week kind of laid out in particular. I uh, reveal my sources, but we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later. But um, yeah. And so, so, I mean, I had five, had five teams out from last week, added five new teams. Hang on, I got it here. I actually write all this crap out <laughs> every week. So it's just my pro- it's, it's my process. It's how I, I'm able to get it done. I've tried a million different ways, and this is still by hand. 
is still the best way to go. So again, I end up kicking off Marist. I mean, Marist at one and three. I'm sorry, they're one and three. Lions, again, I just was not overly impressed with them. I felt they did not deserve to stay in the cold. Providence, again, with a, uh, a tough loss to St. Lawrence. I, I didn't see a reason to keep them in. Naperville North, I, I, I really like what I saw from Naperville North against Loyola. I don't know what's happened since then, but it hasn't been good. So they were out. And, uh, Lincoln Way Central and, and Lockport both lost. So they, they end up having to uh, be shown the door, at least for now. Um, actually, Lockport did, so I'm the same. So I, I originally I had Lockport out, but then I decided they, need, they deserve to stay. I mean, tough loss to Sandberg, but again, I think Sandberg might be better than we all gave him credit for. Certainly, uh, that I gave him credit for. And I decided to keep Lockport and Lincoln Way Central out after the loss to a rival Lincoln Way West. So, um, the new school's in, as I mentioned, Montini gets in at 30. I just think it was time. Montini's 4-0. The big win for them over the weekend, and, and again, nice to have the Broncos back in the rankings. It's been a while. Uh, Morris, I tell you what, um, I think Morris is a really good team this year. They basically have 40 pointed in the whole field, beaten some pretty good teams, and now there's some great games coming up for Morris as well. We'll see how they shake out. But I know they're going to play more in week nine. They're also going to play Richmond Burton, I think, week six, if I'm not mistaken. So. Big test there, but Morris, I think it deserves to get in the poll. Uh, girl, I mean, you know, I said at the beginning of the year, right, wrong, or indifferent, you can talk about a lot of these other programs in the Fox, rightfully so. Well, it, it comes down to me and Brass Tax. I'm going to go Prairie Ridge, Kimmy Grove, and everyone else after that. And it seems to be working out that way. Um, Sandberg just earned their way in. I mean, that, that's a quality win over Lockport. They're three and one now. And, you know, um, Tim, uh, Tim Troy, I joking, at least call him Tim. Troy McAllister has done a terrific job at Sandberg. And, and you're just kind of waiting for the Eagles to, to take that next step. And maybe that happens this year. I don't know. But um, they have been able to pull off some big wins since uh, McAllister's been in charge there for sure. And hopefully, it means that more and more of those kids and those families are buying into what he's trying to do there at Sandberg. And then uh, our old friends in Equal Valley, and, and again, I, I have tongue-in-cheek joke and kid about this when I say I give up on Equal. I can't figure them out. Well, I can't figure them out. It's pretty obvious if you look at the polls, but I, I guess I take a little bit of solace. And I don't think anyone else can figure things out in the page either. Um, you know, you win, you eat. Averville North, in my eyes, you deserve to get in, even though you're two and few. And your two losses came to two Southwest uh, Southwest Prairie teams. Um, but, you know, again, Nequa always seems to find a way. They they win some big games every year, and I give Bill Owens and the guys a lot of credit. So they are also the last team to get in. So they got in for number 23 this week. We'll see. I might have a whole slew to change next week, and if that happens, it happens. I don't mind it. I think people do polls sometimes. You, you, you can get upset and kind of pissed that, you know, oh, God, that's wrong, that's wrong. I don't mind it because it means that there's a lot of quote unquote upsets and a lot of juggling and shuffling. And to me, that's what makes it exciting. I mean, it's great to have, you know, a top five or a top 10 that you don't even really need to focus on very much because, you know, more often than not, they're just going to win and, and just stay where they're at. There won't be a lot of change, and that's okay for a while, but in my mind, it gets kind of boring. So just some thoughts. Oh, and then in, in my 8A through 4A, man, my 7A last year or last year was just jack. <laughs> I didn't have Downers North in. I didn't have Wheaton North in, and, and that's, just, that's just oversight for me. So, again, I apologize for that. I, I, I need to be better in 7A, and I think I am starting this week. And, by all means, if you ever see anything like that, and, and you know, drop me a DM or email me or just post it on the board and just say, hey, dummy, what are you doing in 7A? More than happy to, to look at things and get things fixed and corrected because there, there's no excuse for that. That was me just screwing up. So um, I feel better about my 8A to 4A. Took a little bit more time on it this week and uh, made sure all the eyes were dotted and, Cross, what have you, and uh, 
I can live with it now. I've felt bad about that. I'm much better than that. At least I try to be better than that. So there you go. Um, another solid busy week this week. Um, the other thing I want to get into is uh, I posted on the free board on Saturday. Saturday. It might have been Saturday night or early Sunday. Uh, tell me where to go. I do that every once in a while. You know, it, it, it's one of those things where I look at the schedule this week and say, well, I mean, there's three or four games I could easily go to. I'd say, okay, I can see myself covering these. They're going to be really good games. They're going to have big conference implications. Games are going to be in the playoffs, but, I mean, could flip a coin to the side. So I, I always appreciate feedback from you guys. Now, whether I listen to you or not, another story. It's kind of like kids. I don't listen to what they say, but it, it, it bottom line is I'm a grown-ass adult. I'll go do what I want to do when it's all said and done, but – uh yeah, I you know it's really weird, and then there's there's some people that, and, and again, I don't know why this but but I'm gonna bring it up anyway because it's just us talking, and by the way, this ties into it too. Um, so no matter where I decide to go, people always seem to have a, a, a thought or a suggestion of why don't I cover this team or why don't I go to that team. Um, there's no pre a predetermined plan where I'm going. I think they make that pretty clear. I go week to week, and I, I for the best game I can possibly go cover and get to. Now, in one rare off instance, there's something going on with my family or something I have happening that day or that night that limits where I can go through the travel wise. I'll, I'll let you guys know. But otherwise, I mean, I'll go anywhere across the state. Tell me, tell me anyone. Tell me anyone that has done more traveling to cover high school football in the state than I have in the past two decades. Please, please tell me who that is because I can tell you right now, I think I know who most of them are. Uh, I don't see them anywhere. I don't. There, there are people out there that claim to be, quote, unquote, the number one source and expert that don't go to football games on a Friday. They don't go. They do go. They go for a quarter and then they go home. I don't get it. I never have. But uh, again, I'm not going to get into it. It's, you know what? I, I worry about my own stuff. Um, there was someone on the board talking about, well, and, and, and this is one of my favorites. Well, you never go through it. No, that's bullshit. Complete bullshit. Go through my stories, go through my game coverage, because I do, and look at where I've covered games over the last five to 10 years. And I can guarantee you those games have been, quote, unquote, north or northwest of, let's say, Chicago, okay, when I've been in Chicago. Now, the thing to understand is up until a year or two ago, I had TV responsibilities that kept me in Chicago. I don't have that these days. I, I hope to have it someday. I don't have it these days. So I'm free to go basically where the hell I want to go on Friday night. And why I was a normal on Friday, and hence why I'll be guaranteeing you downstate later in the regular season and into the postseason. I don't need to stay in Chicago land if I don't have to. So if I can find a better game in the Quad Cities, if I can find a better game up in Rockford, if I can find a better game down south in the Southwestern Conference, I'm going to go and cover it. That's what I love to do. That's the best part of what I do that I can determine what I want to do. Um, Really, at this stage, I'm getting to the point where I care less and less of what you think. <laughs> and it might sound really harsh, and um, I think I care more about what the Edgy Nation audience wants. And I think from now on, I'm going to start asking them more directly to say, hey, where do you want me to cover? Because, I mean, bottom line is three board guys are wonderful and we love you, but in the big things, I don't a lot. Um, and again, it's not to be knocking or ripping or disrespecting. I'm not at all. It's just that, you know, the free board, I'm, I'm one of the few sites left on arrivals. It still is a free message board. Um, people have all kinds of false, incorrect theories about why I still have a free message board. The reason I still have a free message board is I still have a, a, a very loyal audience fan base that is still out and active and 90 percent of the plus people out there active on the boards are very good on the boards 
and bring up great topics and bring up great discussions. Um, one of those, um, and I want to point this out, is uh, I reog, and I'm sorry, Iriog, E I R E O G, a longtime poster, posted a link in a story about the, uh, the shooting and the murder of the young man uh, outside of the Hillcrest Friday. It was a great post. And again, Edge, I know these threads go south quickly. I'm sorry, but those who, that want to experience game need to get the message of what's going on out there. Basically talking about violence in and around high school football games, high school events in general. It was a great call to me, and he links in the story from the Tribune. Um, and I, I reply back and said, look, I, I agree 100% with this sentiment, but what happens is it all goes political. It's just a matter of time before people just have this urge to talk politics on their message boards. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You know, I don't know, maybe it makes you feel better that you get it off your chest and, and I'd rather you do it here than do it out in the streets or do something else crazy. But I, I'm not tolerating that anymore. I'm not doing it. I, I You know, it, it's enough to maintain what we have on the board. It's enough to be the babysitter of this entire board every day and every night. Realize how much effort it takes to keep somewhat semblance of control on this board, you know, you don't at all. And then when we start throwing politics and people start talking race and religion and everything else, I'm so done with it. I, I don't even, like even in my personal life with, with politics and what have you, I'm just sick of it. I'm just sick of every discussion veering into politics and the left versus the right and everything else. It, it, it does not belong on, on the free message board for high school football. It doesn't. It doesn't belong on the pay board. It doesn't. Um, and that is going to be, and I've said this before, that is going to be one of the things that's going to shut down the free board. Because I'm just going to get to the point where it's like, you know what? I'm tired of policing it. I'm tired of, I'm tired of filtering out and, and Seeing great posts like this one get completely buried under and and and, and just silenced because of a, a bunch of goofballs that have the, the, the need, the desire to get their political views out there and views on race and everything else. And I'm just sick of it. So <laughs> I hope I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but um, that's kind of coming from my standpoint. Um, the pay side is what matters, as far as I'm concerned. They're the one foot in the bill here. They're the ones that are keeping this board and this site alive. So um, we'll see. The, yeah, it's, it's it's gotten to the point. It's been a good year on the board. Um, you know, even from, you know, you go on Friday night and Saturday and see how many messages are out there and how many people are posting. It's pretty cool. It's great to see. Uh, and and when we have good weeks like that, it, it makes me feel, like, okay, there is a need for this. But again, it's the other 10% of the crap that's going to shut this thing down. Today. But again, still have a little bit of a thought left. And so far, so good. This week, um, again, I asked you guys where to go. I'm going to make that decision today. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm thinking probably Prairie Ridge, Cary Grove. Especially since Perry Ridge is going to wind up in five and Carrie's going to wind up in six. So they'll both go their own separate ways, come play out time. I think that makes a difference. Um, the other one I'm considering, obviously, is Warren and Mike Burke. Um, giving that one some thought as well, but we'll, uh, we'll see. I'll post that one before the line is going in. Saturday, I'm not sure. I got to look at the Saturday schedule. But I, might, I might wind up in town and go see Joey at West and Joey at West and talk to him. I know we can't catch him with Carmen. Game, but it's close. So we'll see. Uh, but that's going to do it. So, again, thanks everybody for uh, watching and tolerating. And everything else. If you have any questions, DM me. Um, post them on the board. Email at the And uh, stay tuned. Lots of stuff coming your way. Have a great week, everybody.